السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. Sheikh, my question is: People of deviant sex use the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he said about Najd that there are earthquakes and tribulations and that the head of Shaytan will emerge. They say that the scholars who follow the aqid of the companions calling them Najdis Wahhabis. So, what is the correct interpretation of that hadith? Okay, we have answered this so many times, Akhi. First of all, if you were walking and a dog barks at you, would it be logical to fall on your hands and knees and bark back? Of course not. You won't be living a normal life if you do this. So when deviant sects say such irresponsible things, illogical things, just shrug your shoulders and move on. We follow Quran and Sunnah. We don't have to pay attention and defend. Why are the Muslims so defensive? All what they do, no, 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 Islam is not like that. No, no, I have to correct your misconception. You've got this wrong. And we spend our time, instead of displaying our religion as we're supposed to, we're just defending things. So every time they throw something at us, we try to be defensive. We ignore them, Akhi. There is so much bigger fish to fry. Number one. Number two. When they say deviant, th deviant, deviant things like this, we say, okay. For example, if I were to reply, let me go back to the hadith you're referring to and see, is it authentic? It checks the first box. It is authentic. Jazakallah khair. What is meant by it? Hmm, how do I know? Should I go to the deviant sects? No. I should go to the scholars of early times who did not have the them ideas of the deviant sects or the super Sufis or the Shia. Or, no, no, no. The real scholars of the early times. I go and check with Imam and Nawawi. I go and check with Ibn Hajar, with Ibn Taymiyyah, I go with Ibn Rajab, I go even earlier times than that, and see what is meant by Najd in Arabic. And read history. Where did all them calamities, them earthquakes, them wars against Islam, the Mughals, the blah, 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 where did it come from? And what is named and what is called Najd according to Medina, where the Prophet said this hadith, huh? is it different? Of course, Najd is a higher ground and it is to the east different from Najd from Mecca, for example. So you have to see what the historians say, what the people of Arabic language say, and what the scholars interpret this hadith. And when you do that, when you do your due diligence, you will find that this, this hadith fits as a glove. First, because the area of Najd to the people of Medina is Iraq. And the adjacent area, Iran and so forth, this is their Najd. This is the high grounds of the people of Medina. This is what they used to call Najd throughout history. Where did all the fitan, all the fitan originated from? From that region. What fitna came from the middle of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Show me. What fitna? What tribulation? What wars? What fights against Islam? So when they say Wahhabis, what are they referring to? Any, not student of knowledge, any layman would immediately identify that they're referring to Tawheed, which the super Sufis, the super Shia, the Rafida, all the deviant sects fight. They don't want Tawheed. And this is the essence of the messages of all prophets and messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal along other things. But as I said, why even care about what they say? 
These guys are not known to be scholars, to be people of knowledge. They're not known to be righteous and pious people. So why should we throw a stone at every dog that barks? Leave them. Focus on learning Quran. Focus on learning your sunnah and knowing the biography of the Prophet ﷺ. Focus on learning your aqidah of tawheed, of the beautiful names of Allah and his attributes. Then you'll be safe and heading to Jannah, insha'Allah.